go, go. Red Jamie, we're live for God's sake. We're here. Play that jam. Here's our here's it's our song. A show that nobody asked for the only reason that we shower. If these are ovaries, good talk is live right now. Jamie, I'm Ooh. getting like a little shoulder thing there happening. I mean, you're really, you're really stepping up your dance. Game. I mean, I feel like I didn't want to say it, but I think that that is really happening. I think it's time for TikTok. That's what I think it's time for. What? We have a bad connection. Yeah, exactly. We're gonna do some quick talks. We're gonna do some. I don't, I don't think so. I don't yeah. think so. Um, say hi to us, guys. Tell us you're here. Um, want to know? Yes, Jamie does really, really want to know. I gotta um, know if my mom's here. Lisa, there's something very exciting today. We have a guest. Yeah, um, we do. But before we get to the guest, we want to just like um, talk about just how how the general state of the that is Jamie and Robin. Well, here's how um, it started. Here's wait, how it started. Go ahead. You go ahead, Jamie. Um, I was complaining as I do to Robin about how all I do all day long now. Hey, AJ. Hi, Kim. All I do all day long is trail my two-year-old. That's literally what I do. That's what I do. And I was saying to, to, to Robin that the conversation that goes on in my head constantly is, Jamie, Jamie, you have to, you got you to enjoy the moment. You got to be in the moment. You need to really enjoy this moment. You got to be there. You have to be Life's passing you by. You're missing it, Jamie. You're missing your children. You're missing it. And I can't enjoy the dang moment. And I said to her, I said to Robin, I said, you know, if it only happened on the weekends that I'm trailing him, I think I could, I could enjoy the moment. But since it's every day, all day, every damn day, I can't. I'm having a really hard time enjoying the moment. I'm yeah. having a hard time. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm like in this beautiful setting on the Cape and trying to enjoy the moment as well. And yesterday, um, somewhere in the middle of school and trying to work and do some things, I found I had asked my children to go outside somewhere in the neighborhood of ten times, and finally I just turned and I screamed. <laughs> Get out of this house! <laughs> and, then, and then somebody said, We were working it out. And then I slammed the door, screaming, I don't care. And then, and then my wife came down and she goes, Wow, you're being <laughs> crazy right now. And then I started yelling at her because she wasn't backing me up. I, I so, listen, I get it. I, I get it. How about the time? How about when I said to my daughter recently, I went, Okay, yeah, hit me, hit me, hit me, see what happens. Go ahead, hit me. Because she was trying to hit did, did she hit you? And then she hit me. <laughs> <laughs> she hit me. Oh, my God. She hit and me. me. I, don't, I don't want to say that you deserved it, but. <laughs> I mean, no. And then she goes. And then I was like. <gasps> I was so mad that she had hit me. I can't believe you would hit your mother. You know. And she goes. And then she, and then she, and then she and then she freaks out and starts crying and goes, you told me to. <laughs> I'm like, I didn't really mean, like. Oh, I, my she's God. Like, she's that six. I have to remember. She's six. But I was up in her face. Like, Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, my God. That is amazing. Ugh. All right. Okay. So enough about us being horrible, horrible parents. Oh, we're um, trying. We are, and what we want to do is we want to bring in our guests, and I'm going to read you a little thing. We were we were emailing back and forth. And first of all, she's hilarious. She's former former kind of like still stand up, I think, but maybe phasing out, retired, semi retired, semi retired. Um, I think writer, she's hilarious. Um, and so she sent this little. We were talking about topics, and she said she wants to talk about the importance of having a sense of humor when it comes to stress, crisis, including fertility. Um, and then she went on to say all these other funny things, and we were like, um, why are you not on this um, live stream right now? So, so we were broader. Why is she not on this live stream right now? She, she is. Here well, she is. now I'll think of nothing funny whatsoever. <laughs> I'll talk about math or something. Yeah. Oh, I, I dare you. I dare you to talk about math. <laughs> I couldn't even fake it if I tried. Uh, no, I can't. I know. Math but, is not my thing. I have <laughs> to say that I love on the bottom, it says the ovaries are talking. Like you're just reduced <laughs> down to your organs at this point. Yeah, exactly. And then, they, and then, by the way, are they talking? Or are they just like slowly sputtering to death in the corner like... <laughs> Yeah, I always say it's you to us. We're all in it together, you know, Ooh. with that emphasis on the us. So That's I feel like we're all, we're in the comedy womb of the ovaries talking. I, I love it. I love it. Uh-oh, Helen. Helen, we're still, Helen needs to create her uh, email address. Uh, Jennifer, oh, you. Just, we didn't get to it yet. We right. didn't get to it. We have a, we have an imaginary producer. Helen, Helen, roll the tape. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like 75 and smoking in the corner and she's always just like criticizing us. And oh my God, I love it. She's a she former day. dance instructor. She seems like she should be. Ooh. You know, like five, six, seven, eight. No, do it again, like type of thing. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you know, 
wish she's a cane. Like she's oh, just yeah. like, to bang or hit yeah. people with. Yeah. 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 A lot of times she's just stopping with her head on the thing like this. People. <laughs> she's so mad at us all the time. She's so yeah. mad at us. But she's I'm making sure it. Elaine Stritch. I yeah, I'm sure I'm Elaine Stritch. That's okay. a good one. Okay, wait, before we go completely off the rails, right. you have to give you listen to the podcast so you know we ask everybody for the elevator pitch of who they are. Oh, give us, God. Come on. Come on. Give us an elevator pitch of your You know you're okay. Come on. I, used to, I did speed dating once. And so I, I'm better at if you were going to date me, but that's sort of not appropriate being that I've been married for 12 years. Um, okay, so the elevator pitch of me is I'm a, a stand-up comic who only performs now uh, when she has energy and when it's a good cause, because um, my ass is tired. Yeah. Uh, who experienced infertility issues directly with her stand-up comic husband, and I started to take my sense of humor, apply it to the stress of infertility, and then my whole career basically changed and I became a fierce writer and advocate for uh, reproductive health uh, and definitely family building for every gender, identity, race, creed, animal, mineral um, <laughs> that you can think of. That was really bad. That was that a was long good. elevator ride. No, like, that was good. We went to the penthouse on that one. I apologize. Maybe it got stuck between that. five and six, but it was great. No, I, I appreciate that. I, um, you know, we have a lot in common f with that because like, um, the, the reason this podcast came about is because I couldn't get pregnant. So we're, yeah. we're, we're in the same boat. And, and now we have this, like this podcast that just keeps on growing. Who knew? And what's so funny to me is when I was doing stand up comedy and writing, I, I got a, a little attention, but it was only when I started really talking about, um, the quagmire of my reproductive organs. Then I'm like getting interviewed on CNN. I'm on Huffington Post. I'm like, okay. So it just was weird that the failure of my um, eggs, as mm -hmm. it were, was the success of my entire career. But mm -hmm. I, I do think, it, and I don't know if you feel the same way, it gave my humor more of a sense of purpose. Yeah. And totally. authenticity probably too. Yeah, my old boss um, used, was is, is like an entertainment guy, and he said to me, "You know, it's funny you've done all these things because I'm also an actress and a writer." And and he was like, he was like, "But this is the thing that's working for you." He's like, "Because it's it's you." And I was like, "Oh, that's wow. interesting." And so not to talk thing. about you guys, but let's talk about you guys for a second. <laughs> okay, I, over that's over. what I love about your Instagram posts in particular, because there's not even any hint of con like being contrived it's like <laughs> it's, there's always like a tone like we are just flying by the seat of our ovaries right now yeah, like basically the pictures and they're so funny but they're so like like raw like hardcore there's just no like oh let's take a picture like this there's none of that I love that you're saying that because it's just it's just reiterating the fact that we are basically a mess. We are unpolished. We don't have the time to fix things. No, but that's keep it up. I love it because I mean, my Jamie's yeah. always saying we're so messy, and I'm always like, no, Jamie, this is gonna look great. It's gonna be polished. No. <laughs> this, this is so messy. Well, because you look at some influencers and they're like in a garden, and, and yeah, no. there's nothing. That's not me. Things are no. fierce and ugly here. I have yeah. two boys, Ooh. and up until um, I was finally able to have children, I was never responsible for the care and maintenance of a penis. Okay, <laughs> me either. That just was not my relationship with yeah. it. Me either. Right. That's right. Pay for a oh, lot of you. It's just, it's just penises all the time. They're talking about it. They're showing it to each other. They're rubbing it on things. I'm like, and that is the reality of my life. The yes, bathroom, how, how old the are they? They're four and eight. Oh God. And my youngest, oh, this was so awkward. I don't know if this is going to be funny or scandalous, but <laughs> my youngest calls it peanuts. He goes, my peanuts. <laughs> and then last night out of nowhere, he was like, don't you eat peanuts? And I'm like, we are heading in a direction <laughs> that I am not ready for right now. I forgot to tell my husband. Some people do. Some people only do it before marriage. Well, I was going to say that. I'm like, if you're lucky, but then I don't know if we want to go down this path. 
I love peanuts though. It's it's like he's marketing to people. But anyway, oh my God. It's, so funny. it's so funny. My two year old, my two year old, you know, he gets erections. Yesterday he had a good one, and when we were trying to change his diaper. <laughs> So and, and um, both my wife and I are like, oh God, what do we do? Like, I can't put the diaper back on because he says it hurts. So, <laughs> yeah. Thing. Well, you know how they have those um, kits that you can do like handprints and footprints of your child. <laughs> Maybe that's something you should look into. <laughs> just a, a plaster, and it should go up in age. Up, up yes. <laughs> it's just what two lesbian moms should do with yeah. young yeah. men. That this is a keep the keep moment. <laughs> oh my God. So wait, we have a question from Laura Doherty for Doherty for you. Oh. I'm curious how stand-up comedians are dealing with doing yeah. online shows during COVID when you rely on that laughter and can't hear it when on Facebook Live or even Zoom, where if everyone's mic is on, I didn't even finish it. Thanks, Robin. Oh, sorry, sorry, Jamie. Keep going. <laughs> it's chaotic. There's no time. Okay. <laughs> it's funny because oh, I'm getting asked that a lot. Face. We could well, see she's got a speed, reading. speed reading class. Evelyn, Evelyn Wood? Is she dead? Yeah. She's probably dead. All right, moving yeah. on. I don't know. Um, yeah, it's the thing that I loved about stand-up comedy and still do is you do get your energy from the audience, but you you also know if it's going well or not while it's happening. Like you're like, okay, like you're it's real time success or failure. Mm -hmm. Um, and a lot of my friends are still performing and they're kind of in a holding pattern. And if there is like an audience, if they are having any shows they have like half the um, attendees so people can be spaced out. And I don't know if you saw Dave Chappelle just did one and he was like outside, the audience is like across a pond oh and God. they all have surgical masks. It's not, that. It, yeah, it's not uh, the best for performing live, but I do think it's made people tap into like different creative resources to be like, all right, I got to work around this. But yeah, it's definitely COVID and comedy have have not had a very lovely relationship. Yeah, COVID and everything really not a lovely relationship. Yeah, not, no, not really. And no not fertility really. E even and um, um, schooling. I mean, I miss school more than I can possibly say. Me too. My son has more. My older son has more meetings than I do. He's got speech. He's got OT. He's got the live Zoom class. I'm like, oh my god. I can't but wait till this is over. It's hard to keep track. It really we have this we have this like running schedule written on the wall that keeps changing between all four of our schedules. Luckily the two year old doesn't have much of a schedule. Yeah. Um, you know what we do at the top of each day is we set reminders on Alexa. And so you can say set a reminder. Uh oh. You say set a reminder <laughs> for Henry's you know, I know she's going to get involved in our live stream in a second here. And then we're going to have an extra. That works really well because they go off because I forget throughout the day what we're supposed to be doing. I know I've missed many of my daughter's uh, Zoom class meetings. <laughs> Oops. Oh, yeah, I've done that for my uh, four year old. I'm oh like, my. what are they going to talk about? What am I missing? <laughs> <laughs> well, tell us, will you tell us a little bit about your journey? I mean, we were trying to, we we're trying to get you on in some way for like what feels like 16 years now. It's we been a while when you first, we, and, I and, feel like a stalker. I'm telling you, cause I'm such a fangirl. Well, well cause um, when you, cause, cause when you first reach out, you, you, you wrote us an email and both Robin and I were like, oh my God, this, this, this woman's hilarious. We need to have her on. We need to figure out a way to have her own, have her on. And we were like, we're going to start a straight ally segment. We're going to do all this stuff. And then, and then now we have the live stream. So this is like perfect. But you guys are like waiting for Guffman for me because we were <laughs> even at baby Palooza. And I was like stalking your booth because you were going to be there. <laughs> and then they were like, oh, no, they're not coming till later. And I had to leave. I'm like, damn it. Uh, like, I'm surprised you haven't taken a restraining order out on me. Had no I, idea. Listen, yeah. we're so happy when anyone likes us. Like, we really do. We know what, like, we're like, invite us over for dinner. And then we're like, but no, but really, invite us over to dinner. Really? And they all go, oh, no. hilarious. And then they never do. They never no, do. This, this is. This is an honor. And and my infertility journey is sort of weird and brief because, um, well, it wasn't brief at the time. It took me three years and three IVFs to get pregnant. And as a Roman Catholic Italian, I thought if I was like anywhere near sperm, like that would be the end of it. Of course. And so when I started trying to conceive and it wasn't going well, it wasn't going well, um, I definitely tapped into my sense of humor as a coping mechanism, but they never figured out what was wrong with me other than when they did IVFs, which I do believe can be diagnostic, I would have like 13 eggs, but one embryo. Like mm. I just, 
my eggs had like really high standards according to my doctor. <laughs> she was like, either they do an embryo or they do nothing. Like it's just like black or white. And so um, one of my favorite things that happened, and it's funny now, is after my first IVF and I spent basically all of my insurance, that's it, on the first IVF. And every um, and every IVF you only got one try at because you only got one embryo out. Yeah, yeah, like the first one is the one I had the most. I had like two and a half, kind of <laughs> like the show, two and a half embryos. <laughs> and then the second one I had one embryo and that was like 10 eggs. And then the third one, I had 13 eggs and still one embryo, which oh. I paid for more, as you can imagine. <laughs> but after the first IVF, they're like, there's a, we there's a big polyp in your uterus and i'm like well maybe is that you know excuse my term but cock blocking the <laughs> possibility of these embryos implanting and they're like i don't know but we've got to take it out and so i was so upset that i decided to name it jackson polyp <laughs> it was an artist that was like down on his luck and he was like a loafer in my uterus yeah he had his own twitter account of course he did of course. yeah and was getting a lot of followers. And <laughs> that type of like, and people were upset too when I evicted him, like when you know, it was time to get my DNC. But um, you can't keep tweeting as a polyp that's gone. I mean, yeah. I, mean no. I, get, I don't know, can it's you? Got short, it's got a short shelf life. Yeah, exactly. So you should you could do of, a new Twitter account of the artist formerly known as Jackson Polyp. In this <laughs> well, Maybe well it's time to be successful. The <laughs> best was when I had my gallbladder um removed on national coming out day <laughs> swear to god it was october 18th um and i named it gary the gay gallbladder because um, <laughs> he was coming out i get it yeah because he was coming out and my friends the reactions were like that's right gary be proud like it was awesome but i i, I guess i have a tendency to name any organs that are removed from me but i guess so point being after the third IVF, I thank God the one embryo stuck, and that's my older son Michael, who's eight. And then my RE was like, "I wouldn't spend any more money because you're never going to get pregnant. Your eggs suck. I give you like a one percent chance of having any more children." And then a week before I turned forty-one, I found out I was pregnant on my own with my younger son Matthew. That's I know. crazy. And, and, and I've don't, heard that story so many times that people I know. Are trying and trying and trying, and then their second kid. I know someone who had twins. Or no, I'm sorry. The second was was the third kid, but they had twins first by fertility and then accidentally pregnant right after. It's like, yeah, happens well, all the time. How how long had you been um, trying the traditional way before you went to IVF? The traditional way, uh, the Barry White way, was <laughs> six months. But and I was like 33 or 34, which I'm like, it's not young. But my doctor's like, no, you're like Betty White. These <laughs> eggs are scrambled and dried like we're gonna have to be a little bit more aggressive so i think that's what freaked me out because i didn't think we were even trying that long yeah and i would have like these iuis um that always ended up being on a holiday it was like christmas um <laughs> what was it new year's and valentine's day but um when it wasn't working it wasn't working it wasn't working i'm like oh my god something could really be wrong it's so frustrating when you're undiagnosed like they still don't know what's what happened but but to your point i talked to people who said that they think that the body once it achieves pregnancy sometimes the body's like oh i right. get it oh, that's <laughs> this is what i'm supposed to do that makes um, sense because even yeah. after all my crazy infertility and i went through it and they had no and they i still have no answers for why i feel yeah. like now if I were to just do it the traditional way, which isn't going to happen, um, I feel like I would just get pregnant. I really do. I feel like it would just like my body knows. That's how. Jennifer, I feel. What you need to know is that Jamie's guiding principle for, for fertility is what Jamie feels like could happen for her body, regardless of what any doctor says. There's, I feel like I could do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As if she just wills herself that way. I feel like that could happen. Yeah. We'll never know because no. I'm not doing that, but. It will remain one of the many mysteries. It will be, but I, I'm going to stick to it that it would Which work. It's probably good if you're daring your children to hit you. You might want to like not. <laughs> you might not want to push. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> she hit me. She hit. She hit me. Well, that's the thing. Whenever I wish, I'm like, oh, I really do wish I I had a girl. I have all this stuff <laughs> that I would love to give them and and will to them and teach them and all of that. My only hope is maybe Matthew will be a drag queen because he kind of likes a lot of my makeup. I'm like really hoping. That's um, yeah, but um, whenever I, I think of a third kid, you're outnumbered. 
I mean, that's yeah. what freaks me out. I don't know. How and are you guys doing that? You. The second one kills you too. Like you're just like, yes. the this is so much worse than double. It's five, five, 10 times. The second one. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think so. I agree. I tell people that having the first one, you can at least solely focus on that. Yeah. But then when I had a second one, oh my God, it was <clears> tough. <throat> You're everywhere. You're just everywhere. And like, and now, especially during COVID time, I talk about this with Robin all the time. Like in order for me to help my daughter with her schoolwork, schoolwork, I have to ignore the two-year-old and put him on a screen. So yeah. you're damned if you do, and you're damned if you don't. If I'm giving attention to this one and I don't have somebody else to help me with the other one, then that one's getting neglected. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like, and with my older son, he's, um, he has autism mm. and he thrives on routines. And so COVID, he is constantly like, what the hell is going on? Uh, I'm home. I don't do school work, school work here. And he'll have these um, like meltdowns. And we kind of do have to, like, it's a group effort. Like even Matthew, my four-year-old, um, will get Michael Water to calm him down. Oh. But it's this whole, I know it's really great. It's this whole... And it's funny because like Michael starts screaming and Matthew's like, I'll get the water. And then I'll get the cup. But it it really is about constantly juggling and trying to get my four-year-old to understand that the eight-year-old doesn't function in the same way that he does, you know, because um, he has things how it, like it's got to be like you need to give Michael the blue lollipop, you know, for the love of God and all that is holy. Like yeah. that's just the way it is. Um but uh, on related to that, I have been asked if because Michael was conceived through IVF and Matthew wasn't, if that's why uh, he has autism. <laughs> uh, it always makes me laugh. It's a good question. Um, um, is it though? But, but the thing is, I always am like, what do you want me to say? Right. <laughs> like, um, I'm just glad to hear that we're not the only people that get asked really ignorant questions. I mean, that's yeah, a well, it's like they don't have a return policy. Oh, especially with autism, they ask me if he has superpowers, um, like a what's his special power? <laughs> like Rain Man is a documentary. Yeah. Um, oh my God. Yeah. You're like, well, I'm hoping it's counting cards, but we don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. That's but crazy. When you talked about at the very beginning, it's true, especially when you go through infertility and you're not getting pregnant, you really want to be a parent. Even if you just want to be a parent, when you have these moments like you do now, I don't know if you feel this way. Sometimes I feel really guilty for feeling bad because I want to kill the children. Yes. <laughs> all the time. All the time. Yeah. That's like part of the thing that's going through my brain when I'm trailing my two-year-old and pissed off that I'm trailing my two-year-old and not getting yeah. out of them. And then it's, yeah. oh God, you worked so hard to have him. How could you, you know, it's like, you, we go crazy. We go yeah. crazy. I hear this very naggy voice in my head, like, this is what you wanted. <laughs> <laughs> this is what you wanted for, you know, three Ooh. years. Yeah, I know. And I try, I try to, it, it, there, there has to be a place somewhere in between, especially because I still am such an active advocate. And I talk to so many people who didn't have children as an outcome, you know, yeah. that, I think that's a conversation sometimes certainly that doesn't get highlighted that you can do everything right. You can do all the treatment. You can use donor eggs or donor sperm, but still not end up with a child. Um, and I really, I feel so guilty when I want to throttle my children. <laughs> yeah. And I know that someone somewhere would give anything for that, but yeah. I don't know. I don't know if there's some way to be like, Okay, I'm human, you know. I mean, I think that's what it is. I think that's exactly what you have to say to yourself. You're human and you do yeah. have a list of things that need to get done that you can't do because you are walking, literally just walking after your two-year-old yeah. for 24 hours straight. Do you wear like a Fitbit? <laughs> I, have, I wear an Apple Watch. It does count. Get those steps, girl. He walks very slow, so, you know, I don't get that uh, much. You know, yeah, he's, he's yeah. Well, actually, he's pretty fat. When he runs, he's out there. Then, but then we're running. Then we're running. Put a bit on him, yeah. That's a good idea. Um, um, Melissa's Melissa. asking, how did your relationship with your husband change with fertility treatments? Mm. You know, there are people I've heard who say, oh, it really helped our relationship. No, it did not help my relationship with my husband. Some people said they grew closer. Huh. Mike uh, and I wanted to kill each other <laughs> near the third IVF. Um, 
I think if you have unlimited resources, maybe it's not yeah. so high yeah. pressure, but because we did, the insurance covered the first IVF, then we Ooh. had no coverage. So my second IVF, I did a clinical trial, which was free. I mean, I do a prostate exam if it's free. I don't care. It's free. And it entailed me injecting myself with some mystery drug. And I remember the nurse being like, this is against everything I've learned, but I'm giving you this. Inject yourself with it. I don't know what it is. Oh, my so, God. So that was my second oh, idea. Okay. Yeah, I'm like, whatever. So that was the second IVF. And then the third IVF, everyone contributed. My sister, my parents, I had some money saved up. And so by the time we got to that third IVF, we were going to be out of funds, out of options. And I remember Mike saying, if this one doesn't work, I don't want to try anymore. Like, I don't want to do this. And it was the first time that we started to then not be on the same page in what we wanted to do. Because I was going to keep trying anything, everything. I was going to exhaust every and all option. And he was like, nope, we should travel. We should do this. We should do that. So it was really scary. And I, I also feel like we had our own coping mechanisms and didn't really communicate well. Yeah. I was like blogging and on Twitter talking about cervical mucus at two in the morning. <laughs> and he was on the other side of the apartment playing video games. And like, we just sort of retreated to our own separate strategies to deal. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I, I always describe like a relationship is like a balloon and to me infertility is this big weight just like sitting on top of it. Yeah, um, that's good. It's funny. I remember Dr. Lisa, who was on our podcast talking about there are some fertility clinics that offer a program where they'll try until you um, until you get a baby and they don't find that people <laughs> take advantage of it. It's like a set cost because the fatigue, yeah. that they, they just quit because of the fatigue of it. It's interesting. Yeah. My, it was never an option to stop for me. Never, even through it all. That's and, how I felt. Yeah. And um, uh, luckily, my wife didn't tell me she wanted to stop. I don't know if she wanted to, but she didn't tell me she wanted to. <laughs> so. You're like, well, then I'm just going to keep staying the course. We just yeah. keep going. And you know about those coping mechanisms. What's funny is like, I think that that's exactly happening in COVID too. Like my wife is playing uh, I keep a copious amounts of Xbox W and she plays NBA YK or some, I don't know. I can't even remember the name of the game, but she's playing basketball 24 seven. All I hear is like the sound of a whistle upstairs and I am like, putting it all into this and, and then screaming at my kids. So it's like, you do kind of retreat to your own thing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, when he does um, the baseball on his, what is it? <laughs> PS, whatever. I sound like I'm talking about my teenage son, um, but he loves the baseball one. But when then I got pregnant on that cycle, we immediately went to couples counseling because I felt like it <laughs> like burned so many of our like strengths that we kind of be like, all right, now we're actually having a child. We've got to um, kind of rebuild. So that was helpful. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's it's a lonely thing. It's a it's a lonely. You don't, and personally for me, when I go through things, I like to, Robin knows, I keep, I don't, I don't want to talk to other people about what I'm going through at all. Not yeah. even my wife. It's mine. It's mine. Let me have it. And I'm going to do my thing. So, you know, if you don't reach out to each other, then you can. And yeah, I'm like, what I talk to, you know, our business partnership is like me going like, oh, you don't want to talk to me? Okay. All right. <laughs> if I'm, if I'm angry, I just don't want to talk. Like, just let me, let me have my yeah. moment. I'm like a little animal. I need to like grow into my own little, mm -hmm. I, that's the thing for me. I think if something's really upsetting me or stressing me out until I find a joke about it or some reason to share it that may be positive, I don't mm -hmm. talk about it. I'm that way too. I, if, if, if uh, my favorite friends to talk to during crisis are the ones who know how to turn it around and make it funny to me and make me laugh about it. Yeah. Those are the ones I want to talk. I don't want to talk to the friends who are like, Oh, how are you doing? I can't, I can't, I can't. There's nothing to do with how are you doing? There's nothing to be done with that question. Like I'm doing crappy. What do you want? Like, that's it. No, 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 that's it. That's all you're well, getting. And I also hate the friends, bless their hearts. They're like so empathetic. You start upsetting them with your problem. And yeah. then you're like, wait, no. <laughs> you can't be more upset. This is about me. Like, like, don't out upset me on my own <laughs> issue. <laughs> That's like that's like the Black Lives Matter movement and all the white white people who are getting so upset over it. Wait, wait, should we, should we do it? I take oh responsibility 
I'm doing that, that horribly cringy thing those actors did. Oh, it's yeah. it's like, don't do, who told you that was a good idea? Don't do that. It's not yours. It's not your struggle. It's not yeah. yours. Yeah. Well, and even any time a celebrity, and I feel really bad saying this, but any time a celebrity is like, oh my God, this, you know, this quarantine is hell. I think of where they live. <laughs> like there's, I don't, I'm not naming names, but one celebrity said they felt like, I think they were in jail. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. I would come over I'm like acres jail. of a house and an indoor pool and all this stuff. I'm in a house in Brooklyn that's crooked. Yeah. Like all of the cars <laughs> that my kids play with all go to one side of the house. There's no central air conditioning. Like this is okay. hell. I'm telling yeah. you. Oh my God. Oh my God. I, uh, I love that. I love that you came on and you're sharing your journey with us. This has been so amazing and fun. And we have to bring you back again. And we have to just yeah. come up with reasons to bring you back because we love you. We're gonna do that. I'll I'll do whatever it takes. I'll be your your you know the ball boy in tennis. Yeah, I could do that. If you drop an ovary, I'll just run and pick it up. And <laughs> ovaries falling everywhere, every which way. Helen, I could be Helen. Helen's assistant. Uh, whatever, whatever you need. Listen, it'll go to Helen's head. We can't allow her to have help. Like oh, it'll no. go to her head. <laughs> you can. You're. We're gonna. You're gonna be our straight ally segment. Straight ally segment. See, I just made this song. <laughs> oh my god, I love that. Okay. When we when we make the song, it's done. Yeah. Uh, that's it. Then it's like the jingle, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and all all the songs I make are the same. They sound exactly the same. So. They, just your jingles. We're gonna work on that. But before, <laughs> before we say goodbye to you, will you tell people like where they can read your work or how they can be in touch with you or follow you or all that jazz? Yeah. Um on Instagram and Twitter, it's Jen J E N N J J A Y P A L. I'm trying to remember my own name. Um, but Jen J Powell, or they could look up Wonder Woman writer, because I love Wonder Woman. Um, she would probably not even like COVID. I, I, I think, yeah, she'd be strangling people with her lasso. But but okay. one can dream, Wonder Woman writer. Um, but That's yeah, stay hi and keep in touch. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming to share in your story. It's been awesome. <sighs> okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Say goodbye. Yeah, to yeah, yeah, <laughs> oh, okay. That was awesome. That was, I, my, I face hurts. my face hurts from laughing a little bit. Oh, thank God for that. We needed that, right? We sure did. We really did need that. Um, all right, Jamie, tell them about our mirror fertility thing. If people want to get involved in that. Well, we have a new sponsor, Mira Fertility and Ovulation Tracker. Um, and it's this cool device that that tracks your ovulation so you can get ready to make babies. Um, and it is up on our website. All you have to go to is www.ovariestalk.com and you will see the little thing to click and you can go get how much off? 25 bucks. 25 bucks off your Mira Fertility and Ovulation Tracker. It's a really cool thing. It is, and Jamie, and I love your commitment to using the www. I love it. That was my favorite part. I needed that to stall to remember our email. <laughs> w. 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 Uh, well, thank you everybody for coming. This was a fun one. I'm so glad we um I'm so I'm so glad we had this time today. Yeah, this was fun. Um it was nice to see all of you there. We we read all of your comments. A lot of them were funny and we love you all. And we'll be back on Friday with drinks and topics. So um if you have any topics that you want to discuss, email us at ovarystalk at gmail.com and we'll we can put it on the agenda. Yeah, because we don't have an agenda for Friday yet. So help us out. <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. All right. Eggs. Ovaries. Good day out. Oh, I said good day. I said good day. I said good day. <laughs> For God's sake.